These are the post-purchase sequence flows that you need to have for your business. And I'm telling you, 95% of companies and agencies get this shit wrong. So what you are currently looking at is a Miro board that outlines the automations that I reckon you have in say Klaviyo or MailChimp or whatever it is you are using. You actually have access to this board. In the description of this video, there is a link. That link will take you to this board and we can actually go over this board together, mano y mano, or if you're a lady, mano y hombre, uh, or mujer, lo siento. Um, but now, this is an outline. Quickly, I'm gonna quickly explain what we're actually looking at and then I'm gonna go through both of these automations. There's two automations because the post-purchase sequence is not really just one flow something everybody gets wrong. I'll explain to you that. I'll explain that to you in a second. Okay. Trigger. This is the trigger. This is the email. This is the conditional split. This represents an updating of the profile property. Let's get into it. Post purchase. Thank you. This is where you thank the reader for their purchase flow trigger. Somebody placing an order, the flow filters canceled or refunded order zero times since starting this flow. So if they cancel or refund their order, we don't want them to go through this flow. There is no point in us sending post-purchase communication to somebody if they've canceled their order. This is something so many people seem to miss out on and it's embarrassing when it gets wrong. So this flow, really important, is not designed to replace the order confirmation email that comes from Shopify. So in Shopify, you are unable you're not able to, unless I think you have Shopify Plus, turn off the order confirmation email. So when somebody places an order, they automatically get a Shopify confirmation email. This is not designed to replace that, okay? You can't turn that email off. We're not trying to replace that in Klaviyo. This flow, this post-purchase thank you flow here is designed to develop brand affinity. And I'll explain that in a second. Straight off the bat, they place an order, the conditional split starts splitting people off based on how many orders they've placed, right? If they've placed an order once over all time, they're gonna go down the yes side. If it's a no, they're gonna go down the no side. So if it's yes, we're gonna delay it by 20 minutes. These emails, I'll explain the 20 minute time delay after I explain these emails. These emails are gonna be plain text emails, no creative, from the founder or from the team of the business thanking the reader for their purchase, right? These emails, if written correctly, will actually elicit responses from your readers, which in turn builds up overall deliverability and also brand affinity. Here's what I mean. Hey, Gavin, we just got your order. We wanted to say thanks. Your support keeps us going when it comes to our mission to serve the martial arts community. If there's anything you need or questions you have, our dojo doors are always open. Just reply to this email, okay? These emails, they don't sell anything. They're just plain text emails written as if they're from the founder or the team just expressing gratitude. And this helps build up like a real human to human connection between your readers and your business. These are super useful in developing that connection, which leads to more purchases, which leads to lower loyalty, which leads to more deliverability and better email marketing. These are so important. Really important though, that you ensure that the from matches the name of the individual writing the email. For example, if this email would be from the Amas team and not the Amas store. So for example, in the from section in Clavio, you would say from Gavin instead of from info at Roddy, 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 Roddy. Really important that you do this. The 20 minute time delay here is to build realism. We're trying to make it seem realistic that somebody has handwritten or written this email from a company. If it came out immediately after they placed it in order, that's gonna be like, well, obviously it's automated. You're trying to, to elicit a human connection with these emails and a 20 minute time delay is a realistic enough time for somebody to get an order, write an email and send it to the person who placed that order. They need to seem like they're coming from the team and from the founder deliberately one-on-one. -on -one. That's how you develop that connection, okay? If they place an order, we're just gonna thank them for their first order. If they place an order equals two, 
We're going to thank them again for their second order. Hey, thank you so much for your continued support of our small business, of our local business, of our organic business, of our business whose mission it is to do X, Y, Z. You're writing this plain text email thanking them for their continued support. Now, if they've placed an order more than two times, I actually think there's no point in continuously sending these plain text emails, right? We want to filter them out of the flow because we're not going to keep thanking them over and over and over and over again. Uh, so I just recommend only doing it for the first two purchases that they make. And that conditional split takes care of that. So that's the post-purchase thank you flow. That's when they first place an order. The fulfilled order flow is where things get even more interesting. This is triggered off of somebody fulfilling their order, not placing their order, fulfilling their order, and also ensures that people who refunded or canceled or their order do not get this flow. And if they place an order during this flow, it kicks them out as well, okay? So here's how it works. This trigger is, this, the, 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 the flow is triggered off of somebody fulfilling their order, and then we send them down these trigger splits, right? These trigger splits are gonna split people off based on the item or collection that they've ordered, okay? This is where it gets nitty gritty, okay? We're gonna split people off based off of their categories of interest because then we're gonna start educating people in these sequences based on the collection or the item that they've ordered. First off, right? Before I go any further, things do get a little bit tricky because depending on how you set up your store, these trigger splits, note these are not conditional splits, are designed to split people up if their order exactly matches the trigger, not if the order comprises of multiple items in different collections, okay? Meaning if somebody ordered two items from two separate collections, they would go down these paths as they are currently set up. The way to overcome this is to create many trigger splits based on a myriad of combinations, which takes a lot of work and which is when you start getting someone like myself involved. For example, if someone bought socks, create a path, right? That sends them down the sock path. Or if someone bought socks and shirts, they go down another path. Or if someone bought shirts, they go down another path. Or if someone bought shirts and shoes, they go down another path. Do you see what I mean? There's like a million different combinations. And it's just a matter of figuring out what's important to you, right? The combinations really are endless. And depending on how many categories you have, it's important for you to triage what items are most important for you in your business in terms of revenue and profit. And focus specifically on splitting up those journeys according to profitability and revenue. I know that probably sounds confusing. Don't get too worried about it the message will still be clear as we go through this flow, okay? Email 1A, 2A, and 3A. These emails will simply let the reader know that their order has been fulfilled. There are some key elements you wanna include in these emails in regards to information. Assuming you are using Shopify and Klaviyo, I recommend including the following details. Now make sure you turn off the fulfilled order flow in Shopify, because you're gonna bring that information into Klaviyo, and you're gonna display the following important information, such as the item name, the billing address, the tracking number, and the product block of the item that was ordered in that email. You can use these codes here. I've added them in there for you. One thing you can also do with these emails is you can get them marked as transactional, which means they are absolutely gonna get delivered into somebody's inbox because they're treated as a very high priority email. You just need to ask Clavio to mark these first emails as transactional. Transactional emails are essentially emails that are considered like requirement, required reading from the receiver. As long as there's no sales material in there, they're gonna get way better deliverability, which is gonna affect your overall email marketing. So make sure they get marked accordingly. After a seven day delay, I've just chose seven days as just a bit of a placeholder here, but this is one of the most overlooked parts of the fulfilled or post-order, post-purchase sequence, right? It's the educational follow-up. In these emails, I like to write, in these emails, I like to write about how to use the product, how to care for the product, hidden features about the product. We're essentially trying to influence value and value comes from continued use. And how do you encourage continued use? 
well, by educating about the product, showing cool things that you can do with the product, the benefits of the product, and continuously hitting that. And the more value that somebody perceives that they're getting from something, the more likely they're gonna purchase in the future again. So maximize value by educating within these emails. Before I go down to these sequences, note we are educating based off of the collection or item that the individual bought, which is why these trigger splits are so important. We're splitting people off based off of what they've ordered. We're not giving people generic emails. We are educating based off of what they have purchased and told us that they are interested in hearing more about. This is where email marketing gets personalized. Like personalization isn't just, hey, first name. It's creating specific, dedicated content for individuals based off of what they've done with your business. Now, assuming you have your trigger split set up properly, just down here, by the way, um, this email, 3B, is just gonna be a more generic email saying, hey, um, any questions, kind of let us know because if they go down this side, we know they haven't hit any of the other collection splits up here. Let me make this a bit more plain. This splits people off based on the collection of item that they've ordered, right? And if they hit no every single time, we know that they haven't hit any of these collection or conditional splits, right? It's not splitting them down. So we know we haven't matched the triggers with the trigger splits, meaning it's just generic, right? Like this email is gonna have to be a bit generic in terms of its shipping. It's not gonna have to speak specifically to a collection. It's just going to be a generic email. In this case, you know, talking about, hey, other collections, some cool things about our business, USPs provide that continued education. There's explanations in all these blocks. Go back into these in your own time. Um, email 1C, the only way someone is gonna buy from you again is if their perceived value of their product outweighs what they spent on it, right? Um, there's a bunch of, you know, like I said, factors that contribute to value. And so really, I just kind of recommend encouraging that continued use, but also having opportunities to upsell and cross sell in these emails based off of what they ordered, right? So if this trigger split splits people off who have placed an order for shoes, you can safely assume that you can cross sell socks here or shoe spray. Same again here. If they place an order for socks, you can safely assume that maybe they need to buy more socks or shoes and you can start cross-selling in these emails, right? That's what you do here. Conditional splits here. Place an order zero times over all time where item equals XYZ. This is where you recommend a specific product as long as they haven't placed an order that this conditional split filters people out of. And you can also add a discount if you want to encourage repeat purchases. I only recommend adding a discount if they place an order equals one overall time, not two, because then you just encourage coupon code abuse. This is quite a lot. I'm not gonna lie, guys. This flow, these flows are quite in depth, quite technical. But what I have found when implementing these flows is that the post-purchase well, uh, post purchase sequences tend to be some of the highest revenue generating flows that our clients have more than the abandoned cart, not as much as the welcome series because the welcome series doesn't actually generate revenue, it just captures revenue. I can explain that later. But the post-purchase thank you flow tends to be the flow that generates some of the highest revenue for us. And the great thing about that is it's revenue that comes from people who are placing an order again. So our emails are increasing the repeat order rate. That's where these emails get powerful. That's where email marketing really shines. Now. For my pitch. I have a bunch of other automations that I've outlined all in this document right here. You can have them all, all of them, including the softwares that I use for email marketing, explanations for everything as well, right? Like why I use Figma, what I do for the Google review flow, for example, everything all for $7. All you have to do is click that button, seven bucks, and it's yours. I think it's well worth it. Any questions, guys, let me know. I hope you enjoyed that video. And uh, yeah, link is in the description.